Okay, uh, we're working on a scenery. Let me enable kind of landscape so we can preview with location. Okay, zoom out. And you notice our sun is located around this area. So we can position, we can play a little bit more with the sun to create interesting shadows. By default, it's actually almost set on gold, uh, a very nice position on the sun. How I say we can move slightly towards camera, which is created harder shadows up front of us. So right there will be a little bit darkening, kind of. Okay, let's bring sun just a little bit bit up. Okay, in this case we'll have it um, a little bit more shadow on the ground hiding, some highlights, give it preview also on the mountains, a little bit more shape. So we have it uh, sideways, which is kind of nice and we can play a little bit more with the sun position let's go inside the atmospheres so and right here you can see we have it preset for our sign light we're on the standard spectral uh, we could switch to photometric but i do like a little bit more saturations and standard spectral give it kind of a little bit more in this case i do want to modify my ambient light i want to set desaturated and a little bit darker it will give it us nice warmer colors Okay, um, next we'll go inside the sky and fog. And here's what we're going to increase quite a bit of this haze to hide this distance. This is very well done with a, working with aerial perspective. So if we put it like around three, you can see how much those mountains will start hiding soon. So it's give it nice, this distance. See, they're like very beautifully have this distance applied to them in a far away. So we can do this way as well. Let's get it our ground fog will increase so it will add a little bit more on the lake look it's what i want to do a little bit more wider right in around this area okay uh, we do increase glowing and it's related to our glow intensity we could reduce this glow by reducing amount of the glowing from the sun and reason because sun is closed it's what creating this strong glowing so we could we're going to reduce some of this. Uh, we also can reduce by amount of fog or drop down fog a little bit. So, for example, if we're going to more like 140, you'll notice right here we'll start kind of cutting off. The other ways we also can increase haze, and haze will reduce some of this stuff. So, let's increase, for example, haze. You'll notice we'll start losing a bit more details and then darken over all our scenery because our haze is kind of dark. So I don't know if I want I like this, but if you think it's too high, some sun, we can do this. Okay, let's go back to our haze. Okay, um, we leave it some maybe on a glowing. And again, we can do this way, or we can also take sun, and even you know put it up front of the camera if you want it. Bring up to here, a little bit up, yeah, a little bit more on the side, almost right in the corner. And this way we'll kind of highlight, kind of creating sunrise, sunset, classical look. I don't know, we want to do this way. Let's take sun and put it on the side. A little bit, just slightly up front of the camera, but same angle. This is will reduce some of this glowing, the haze we have it. We'll have it a little bit more sky, more kind of daylight type. Okay. So let's look, we can also take sun, bring a little bit more up for harsher sh shadows, more daylight, or actually these shadows is not necessarily will look too pleasant. So we maybe want to take and bring down to more golden hour kind of position. Let's bring a little bit more up front. You see these areas, okay. So it kind of look very nice warm area. Okay, we'll go to atmosphere editor and look on some additional options what we can modify. Um, on the lights, I say we can more going towards sunlight or a little bit ambient. Um, because I will put some clouds, we're probably okay without ambient. We could reduce some shadowing to make a little bit more softer pastel kind of look. Um, ambient light. Let's take it darker and leave it saturated. This should give it us uh, 
Sayanish on a color, a little bit right this area. You can see um, in a second when it's refresh. Again, playing with these colors, you can adjust how the overall the atmosphere will look. And uh, let's go to the clouds. We'll add new cloud. This is Stratus normal cloud. Um, and I kind of I don't actually like. So let's just delete it, this one and preload it. So I'm going to Spectral 2 and we'll just preload it flat cameras. Um, right here, I want to take opacity to 100% and density all the way to like 1%. So what it does, it will create this very whispery kind of clouds covering, like almost sounding in the atmosphere. See, like kind of very nice, beautiful cover. Okay, we'll increase details. Altitude 1, height 500. We want to take altitude variation to 100%. Let's increase shadowing a little bit and ambient. So it will create a little bit more details on this cloud, but it's created a very nice, just whispering, nice morning type or a kind of cloud. So it's when atmosphere start forming. So let's look nice right there. Uh, we could add more um, kind of painting clouds if we want it. We can do same things, go right there. Let's select maybe um, cloud front. It will be, should put it right here which is kind of add a very nice touch to this. And on a cloud forefront, okay, we have 1.6 kilometers altitude and it's, it will add just around this area. Again, if it's too um, much, I'll just remove this one. Maybe it does not work very well for this. Um, this way we can try different ones. Dark cameras will work good or a big cameras. We can work this as a basic. Okay, right here, preload. And uh, same with this, we can play a little bit more around. We can actually, let's take altitude on this down to um, maybe just two more kill, just a little bit lower. Okay, we can take cover slightly down. Um, let's, feathering details increasing, pop up altitude variation. I like how on the top that will add nice effect and pop up a little bit on the shadows. Okay, also we need to look on a cover. I think the cover may be a little bit less and increase feathering. So like around right there. So let's look in a preview. Okay, and we have some of those cover right there, some clouds, but I think because high details and low cover, we have it all this kind of unnecessary grain. So let's increase a little bit cover and take details down. So we'll have it just a little bit right those areas. Okay, maybe feathering a little bit down as well. So should create a little bit bigger clumps of the clouds around these areas. Okay, right here you can see create this. Um, we can increase opacity and take density. So let's take density slightly down and pop up a little bit on opacity. So we will have a little bit uh, preserve some of the darkness with our opacity, but with the density, there will be somewhat translucent, a little bit more on the edges. So you can see right there, create kind of better blending, I think, in this case. Um, we still could work a little bit more with atmosphere and lighting, and we can do inside our sky fog, so we can still kind of playing maybe a little bit more with the sun and um, with the scattering, so it's create much glowing from our right side with a sun like it so we can increase some of this glowing okay from that area give it a little bit more we can also pop up a little bit on the fog which is make a glowing and take more on aerial perspective hide more our mountains but the problem with when we do any time like this is will increase also this yellow glowing around um, we could take some a yellow glowing by decreasing decay amount. It will bring um, some color, but I do like cyanish and warm color. They're complementary and I work very well together. Right here, example, you can see it's a little bit less yellowish more this way. So let's go back to bring back a kind of like warmer. 
increase here a little bit okay let's go bring this down i say it's a little bit adjusting tweaking you can play around okay almost we're done with this except on the sun what i want to do is go inside shadows editing for our sun and take this down to 98 so some of those shadows is hard and we want to create this foggy ambient light we want to probably reduce some of this shadowing in the area so at this point i'm going to click set final and going to render a little bit higher resolution for our preview see what we have so far so i'm going to pause this tutorial and we continue in next portions after render is completed okay so right here you can see we finish render and actual scenarios look nice i like how the cloud come whispering you can see um also mountains on the back as well we apply it with our haze and fog so we have it somewhat distance and again it's represented by losing some of details coloring and uh, some of this kind of distance almost saturation losing on this okay so right here is our image and you can always just post like this it's a good uh, straight out render but we're going to inside uh, photoshop and i'm going to show you how to retouch a couple things before I do this what i like to do is to save this image and when we save it we want to be sure it's safe in photoshop format because i'm going to open and most time i save this because it does preserve alpha mask even you don't have or did not render with the enabling but it's always saved so we can use this if we need it against the sky but also it is uh, layered in its very nice format for Photoshop to use and compress. However, remember, if you save as JPEG, be sure you're going inside the options and increase quality because by default it will set to 70% and it will have some, you know, those blocky pixelization that JPEG have. It. You will lose some of this quality of resolution, which does not make sense to render on higher res. And, um, this way you will have it better but again if you save as jpeg i would prefer if save at least psd you can also use it for tff which is a loose list type format so we'll go save as psd1 format okay and let's go just name landscape 2 okay and the next thing is what i want to save it is save as hdr it's a high dynamic range um it, this is very strong part of the view when you create image it's also save information for the lighting so you can use it this if you do with video games or other things but in this case i want to use hdr to bring some of those details that we don't even see it on this image but they're there so in different applications and i'll show you in the next tutorial how we do this but same i'm going save as hdr type and we'll go select, save this uh, menu ask which one I want keep it disabled. I'm going with disable tone mapping So in its save it. So let's go ahead and post process in next tutorial